Hey Chris, what's up dude? Happy Sunday. I really can't even believe how quickly time is flying this year. We're almost to February. The first thing I wanted to say is obviously thanks for your Zelda video. That was both informative, interesting, and it actually got me way more excited uh, than I was uh, for Zelda in and of itself. We both put out videos this week, you know, kind of about Nintendo and some of their concepts and really kind of a week after the show and what our impressions are of it. And needless to say, there's definitely been some negative uh, you know, surrounding the system, but your video actually got me really excited to play Breath of the Wild. There was so much I didn't know about that. It's crazy to think that we're just a little over a month away from playing that game. Ridiculous. But I want to say it's been a crazy week. First we had Final Fantasy XIV's patch 3.5 drop and then obviously they so showed off the Switch and Nintendo's been releasing out more information about that this past week. Then this past Friday Yoshi P showed off the Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood Collector's Edition along with all the various information regarding pre-orders, early access, and all of that. But for $200, personally, I'm going to pass on the physical collector's edition and just stick with the $60 digital collector's edition. But that's just me. Do what you want with your money. But this week, we both put out videos about the Nintendo Switch, and that's what I wanted to talk to you today about because there's just a lot of ne negativity around that. And I also, especially with my video, kind of express that as well. So. Today, I want to focus in on the positives of the Nintendo Switch. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to really try to focus in on the positives. If you want my true feelings, my raw expressions, I'd invite you to make sure you check out my previous video talking about just my thoughts of the Switch overall. But before we begin, I'm going to need to drink a little bit of optimism. Hello, darkness, my <sighs> okay, also, all kidding aside, here we go. On the positive side, Nintendo really hasn't actually revealed anything about their virtual console just yet. Whether you consider that a positive or a negative, right now it just means that we don't know, and so there's a lot of potential for really awesome news, hopefully. Positive, thinking positive. So also, uh, hopefully this isn't dangerous though, so just allow me to speculate for a little bit. So first, if Nintendo allowed users who already bought virtual console games on the Wii U to have those games on the Switch, that's going to be a huge win for those fans and the system in general. But even if they don't, the Switch has a huge potential library for those who pick up the system in March and throughout the rest of the year. Just think about it. You have the NES, the SNES, the N64, the GameCube, the Wii, the Wii U. That's a huge backlog of potential games for anybody, really, with any virtual console. So we've already actually seen that the Switch is more powerful than the Wii U. So what this actually then affords us is the ability to really, you know, know that all those past games are potentially uh, viable for the system. But the Switch could position itself as the, you know, the handheld, the console, for everyone. It could it literally be my entire childhood all wrapped up on an SD card that plays on my TV and in the palm of my hand. This also allows me as a dad to be able to play games and introduce my daughter, who's only two and a half right now, to these type of games, to Mario and to Zelda and all of that without it being over intimidating and even, uh, you know, I guess just overwhelming. Uh, we were having a lot of fun playing Super Mario Run together on my phone, and this will be uh, the next step in which that I can introduce her to more interesting games, especially with characters that she is already starting to know and recognize. But aside from that, there's really one thing that Nintendo has up its sleeve with the Wii U itself, is that you have that potential for all those games to come to the Nintendo Switch. I mean that obviously there was 13 million people who might have already had that game, but for the vast majority of Nintendo fans that missed the Wii U generation, there is the potential there for amazing games to continue to fill out the library and then draw in. <laughs> and derive the install base forward. Someone told me that the Nintendo catalog is so vast that it could they could literally give out a game a month for several years and still have just a vast majority of their library untouched in that time period. So my hope is that regardless of whether they take the game at the end of the month away or not, that it could be a potential uh, Netflix of video games, with, you know, which is how their online service, in my opinion, would be really cool to be structured. So if you think about Netflix, you have shows that are coming in and going away, and we don't feel cheated by that fact. Uh, so we do have this presumption with Xbox and PlayStation that we get to keep the, those games as long as they're subscribed. The difference here is that they give us lots and lots of options. And so my hope is, is that Switch online service could literally be that. It could be the Netflix of games where you have lots of content every month, 
some of that changes. And, and essentially, it's going to be, uh, it could be the next Sega channel for modern day times. Now, for all those out there who don't know what the Sega channel is, it was something that was introduced back in the day on the Genesis in which you would get 30 games a month delivered to your console that you can play. And every 30 days, that would just change out. So it was really quite innovative for its time. And I was always surprised that no one had ever tried to do that again. Maybe now is a good time to try to bring something like that back. And with the subscription service, maybe that makes more sense. I don't know, I'll let you be the judge. So if that's something what Nintendo's got up its sleeve, count me in, that actually sounds really interesting. It would also be something very different from what Xbox and, and PlayStation currently offer. So I'm trying to think positive, looking forward to March 3rd and getting my hands on the Switch itself. I, I think that's going to be something that's gonna be, you know, it's always gonna be a fun day. Technology, new technology, when it comes and shows up on your doorstep, you can't beat that. So with that, actually, I do want to talk about one last thing. So I'm hugely excited to see our community continue to grow. It's, <laughs> it's staggering. It's just so exciting and it energizes me to make more videos. So I was thinking, how, you know, how can we, you know, continue to grow this community? So with uh, Julie, uh, Julie's permission, uh, we're actually excited to announce that we're going to be expecting a new baby in July. We couldn't be more thrilled. And if you ask me if it's gonna be a boy or a girl, we have no idea. We're gonna wait and be surprised. We did that with Maddie. We're gonna do that again with the new baby. But that's one more for the community and one more Gil Farmer for this dad. <laughs> Just kidding, by the way. So please keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we move forward to July. And with that, I'm gonna wish you a great week. And Chris, I'll see you next Sunday. Hey, it's me. Thanks so much for watching this video. You should click here to subscribe and here to maybe check out some more of our videos. So again, thanks for watching. We hope you like this video. We hope you subscribe and join our community. Let us know in the comments below what you think, and we'll see you next time.